So in this next module, we're going to talk about writing uh, sentences that are in parallel structures, so we're using parallelism. And I'll give you an example here to start. I use this example from Strunk and White. Again, I'm going to refer to them a lot today. Um, so here's an example of a sentence that's unparalleled, not parallel. Locust denuded fields in Utah, rural Iowa was washed away by torrents, and in Arizona the cotton was shriveled by the placing heat. Notice that's unparalleled because all of those items in the list are write, written in different forms, different structures. So we get locust denuded, that's that subject verb, and then we get rural Iowa was washed away by torrents, that's in the passive voice, and then in Arizona, which is a preposition, so you can see that we end up, these all don't match. So we want, when we're doing a list like this, we want those things to match. So to make this match, you want to make, put them probably all in subject verb form. So you could write in parallel form, locust denuded fields in Utah, torrents washed away rural Iowa, and blazing heat shriveled Arizona's cotton. So we get subject verb, locust denuded, subject verb, torrents washed away, and subject verb, blazing heat shriveled. So uh, that's now in parallel form. Here's an example of, you know, basically when you, when you want to write in parallel form, you have to make a choice of what those structure of those items in the list are going to be, and you've got to make a choice and, and stick to it. So here's a, an example of, of a sentence that's nicely in parallel structure. I pulled this from a recent article I was reading on the uh, Mo Mars rover Curiosity. So it says, NASA's intrepid Mars rover Curiosity has been through a lot in the past year. It flew 354 million miles, blasted through the Mars atmosphere, deployed a supersonic parachute, unfurled the giant sky crane, and touched down gently on the surface of Mars. So notice that in that second sentence, it's got a list of things, but they're all parallel. They all follow the same structure. Uh, we've got subject, verb, subject, verb, subject, verb. It flew, blasted, it deployed, it unfurled, it touched down gently. And I also want to, I like this example, I want to point out to you the really nice verbs that are in this sentence. It flew, it blasted, it deployed, it unfurled, it touched down gently. Right, so those are really nice verbs. Nicely uh, in, done in parallel form. So pairs of ideas, lists of things, and pairs of ideas that are joined by and, or, or but need to be written in parallel form. So here's an example. The velocity decreased by 50%, but the pressure decreased by only 10%. So we've got subject verb, subject verb. So those have to be written in the same form. Subject verb, but subject verb. Like structure like that. And um, if you want to read more about this, I'll refer you, especially uh, those of you in the biomedical sciences, to a really good book on scientific writing by Mimi Zeiger called The Essentials of Writing Biomedical Papers. Um, she gives some examples uh, like this of, of pairs of ideas joined by and or, or but that need to be in parallel form. And this is a really nice uh, reference. If you've got time to do some extra reading, it's quite a bit longer than Strunk and White, but has some really good information. And I'll be referring to some material, material from her book uh, throughout this course. Here's another example of pairs of ideas joined by and or, or but needing to be in parallel form. So you would say, we aim to increase the resolution and to improve picture quality. So notice we've got an and here connecting those two ideas. And they're both an infinitive phrase. So we get infinitive phrase and infinitive phrase. So you have to be careful when you've got pairs of ideas like that to make sure those are in parallel form. And of course, when you're writing lists, you want to make sure that those lists of ideas or numbered lists of ideas even uh, should be written, th those need to be in parallel form as well. And I'll just remind you here, as we talked about in the last module or uh, two modules ago, that if you're writing a list of examples or a list of ideas, and you're not exactly sure how many items to include in that list, default to the rule of threes. You'll see that there are a lot of these examples I'm going to show you have indeed three items. So here's an example of uh, something that's a list of items that is not in parallel form. If you want to be a good doctor, you must study hard, critically think about the medical literature, and you should be a good listener. You can hear that that sounds funny when you read it out loud. You must critically think you should, right? We need to make these in parallel form. You could say you must study hard, critically think, and be a good listener or something like that, but they all need to match. So we could change this to make it parallel to if you want to be a good doctor, you must study hard, listen well, and think critically about the medical literature. I inverted the order a little bit there just so that they, since the think critically came with medical literature, we, had, we could put a little more at the end. But in this case, we've got imperative, imperative, imperative. You must study hard, you must listen well, and you must think critically. 
So those are uh, parallel. The other way to restructure this one so that it's parallel would be to turn all of those items in the list to nouns. I don't think this is quite as good, but you could say, and this would be parallel, if you want to be a good doctor, you must be a good student, a good listener, and a critical thinker about the medical literature. So that would work too because then they'd all be nouns. Of course, I always prefer verbs. Here's another example of something that's not parallel in a list of items. Now this is a list of items that's numbered, but even when you've got numbered items, those have to be parallel as well. So it says this research follows four distinct phases. One, establishing measurement instruments. Two, pattern measurement. Three, developing interventions. And four, the dissemination of successful interventions. So notice we've got two that match and two others that match. We've got an establishing and a developing, those match, and a measurement and a dissemination, those match. So we want to make them all match. So probably the way to do that would be to turn them all into gerunds, that is ing's words. So you would say, this research follows four distinct phases. One, establishing measurement instruments. Two, measuring patterns. Three, developing interventions. And four, disseminating successful interventions. So pay attention to this, especially when you're writing lists. This is something students often get wrong. Um, you know, you get kind of buried in the list and you lose your, you lose your place. So you have to be really careful and go back and, and make sure everything is parallel. So I'm going to just do one practice example here. If you'd like to test yourself, you might pause the video at this point and see if you can get this one into a, a parallel structure. Uh, if you have less time, I'll just lead you through it and there'll be some more practice uh, examples later. So this one reads, Bates describes five principles for the success of decision support systems in clinical settings. Speed, real-time delivery, integration into workflow, simplicity, and to avoid data entry. You can kind of hear the non-parallel structure there when you read that one out loud, that to avoid data entry is a sudden shift. You're going from nouns, speed, delivery, integration, simplicity, to suddenly an infinitive phrase, to avoid. So this one's actually fairly simple to fix. You just have to turn everything into nouns. So we would fix that one by just saying Bates describes five principles for the success of decision support systems in clinical settings, speed, real-time delivery, integration into workflow, simplicity, and the avoidance of data entry. We do have to add some extra words there to get that one into, uh, into parallel form, uh, but now it is correct and it, and it reads uh, in parallel form. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.